episode of Modesty's Mortgage Masterclass. This is session six. I remain Ikenna Umezudike. I'm the director of Modesty Financial Consultants Limited, based in the UK, and we offer mortgage and financial advice to um, clients and customers within and outside of the UK. So today's um, session is a continuation of um, last week's session and we are continuing educating you on mortgage products based on interest rate um, options available to clients and customers who are looking to take on mortgages for the purpose of purchasing properties for either investment or residential purposes. All right, so um, first of all, I hope you guys are keeping fit and staying safe and doing all you possibly can to um, be safe in this very challenging time. Um, coronavirus is real, it kills, it doesn't respect age or status or position. So please do whatever you can and within your powers to protect yourself and your family. All right, and follow all the um, health guidelines that we are given. Don't take them light handed. Okay, so basically, um, last week we've been, we were talking about some interest rate options and we discussed uh, the standard variable rate option last week as well as the tracker rates um, product. And um, this week we're going to be talking more about some other uh, interest rate options. But first of all, let me give you some market updates around the mortgage and properties market as pertains as it pertains to the UK and market environment. So we have seen um, mortgage products in the markets uh, fall by nearly 50%. You know, as of uh, 11th of March, there were 5,200 and that nine mortgage products in the market, but that has fallen to as low as 2,768 products They're now in the market, about 47% drop in the number of um, available mortgage products in the market. What it means is that lenders are withdrawing their products and withdrawing a lot of products from the market. It's not yet a time to uh, be alarmed at this, it's simply because they are reassessing their risks and they are, um, you know, readjusting their internal operational capacity in terms of staff that are available to take on new products and they are also experiencing difficulties, especially as it um, pertains to valuations. When people uh, come to value, when people need their properties valued before the mortgage offer is made, there are not enough valuers because if it involves face-to-face -face valuation, there are no values to carry them out because of the lockdown situation in the UK. So lenders are withdrawing lots of products from the market pending um, uh, future guidelines in terms of the lockdown. So that's why we have, you know, we're experiencing this huge drop in uh, available mortgage products in the market at the moment. The other thing that's also happened in the market is, um, you know, Average interest rates have dropped across the various uh, mortgage products. For example, the average standard variable rate dropped from 4.90 to 4.68% now. And then the average uh, two-year fixed rate mortgage has dropped from 2.43% to 2.22%. And the average five-year fixed product has dropped from 2.73% to 2.51%. And then the average two-year tracker have dropped from 2.03% to 1.88%. So you can see that difference between the standard variable, pro the average standard variable product and the average um, two-year fixed product is around 2.46%. So it's a very good time for anyone who is on variable product who is looking for a better option to, you know, get on the market now and, you know, switch to um, a better product if your your condition allows you, if the product you are in and if your circumstances permit you, it's a very good time to switch because the difference between the standard variable, average standard variable rate now and that of two year fixed is 2.46%. That's a massive difference. If your circumstances permit you, this is a very good time to you know uh, search around the market and see what's out there and see if you can get yourself onto a better product. 
but the, with the limited number of products on the market now you know you might struggle to find something very very convenient for you but then there might still be something out there for you so it's worth giving it a try and worth giving it a go and then the other thing i wanted to bring to your knowledge is about the house prices now as at early march prior to um, the lockdown the house market the house prices increased by three percent as at early march prior to the coronavirus lockdown and mayhem they increased by three percent but obviously i'm sure by the end of as at the end of march if the statistics and data were gathered it will be in a different you know environment but that's the available data and that's what it shows it's an increase from 2.8 percent as at february but the um the um the quarterly price uh, increased 2.1 percent so house price in the uk has increased so between january and march there has been the quarterly increase of 2.1 percent in house prices it's it's going to be difficult you know gauging what um the house prices are going to look like in the short term because currently there are no activities or very little activities going on in the um house in the house in the housing sector in the property market because of the lockdown and if there are no activities and there are no um, buying and selling going on it becomes very difficult to kind of gauge what the market is like you know what the level of increase or decrease is like so in the short term it's going to be um, difficult gathering enough data to be able to establish what the house price has uh, done and what has happened in that um, in that sector in the very short term but then this is the information available to us at the moment okay so let's jump straight into today's topic um, still talking about interest rate options available to you today we're going to be talking about the fixed rate option the fixed rate product so this is a very common uh, mortgage product that anyone who has you know taken a mortgage or is conversant with mortgages you know will be will be aware of fixed rate products but what we t what we uh, do here is not just talking about those uh, products um on the periphery of it we dig deep down and tell you things that normally you wouldn't get to know on the general surface of just knowing about the product i'm sure that if i ask some people about the fixed rate product they can just give you one or two things they know about fixed rate products which they have gathered from either their mortgage advisor or from their lenders but we want you to get beyond the primary knowledge of what these products are so that you can make an informed decision that is the aim of this uh, educational session to educate you beyond the primary knowledge of mortgages and then you can have an informed um, you can make an informed decision when make when taking mortgage decisions so fixed rate products what are they just like the name implies yeah this kind of mortgage product the the, the interest rates and by implication the monthly mortgage payment for the client is fixed you know within a certain period or within a given period say for example if you take a two-year fixed uh, in rate product it means for for the next two years that interest rate is interest for example the rate we have talked about is the average uh, two-year fixed rates now it's about 2.22 percent so let's just say you know you take a, a mortgage for two year fixed and it's 2.22 percent it means for the next two years that interest rate is fixed at 2.22 percent it's not going to go up it's not going to come down and whatever your monthly repayment figure is within that two-year period is what it is going to remain within that two-year period. It's not going to go up and it's not going to come down. Okay, so that is based in simple terms what fixed rate mortgage is and what fixed rate products are and what they do. It simply means that it is stable, it is fixed within a given period. So it expires after the two year after the two-year period, that product you know expires you either get onto another product or fix it again or you automatically get switched onto the uh, lender standard variable rate product all right so in the current um market of low interest rates it's a very very competitive market and lenders are really fighting over the available clients you know in this market so and now we have seen um there are various you know periods that you can fix products for 
you know you can do a two year fix you can do a three year fix <coughs> excuse me down to a four year fix five year fix now there are even 10 year fix products you know so you can actually fix your mortgage now for the next 10 years and you know exactly what the interest rate is going to be like for the next 10 years you are you are it is fixed for that period the payment is fixed the interest rate is fixed no matter what happens in the market and in the environment that rate is fixed. it doesn't go up and it doesn't come down so borrowers with fixed rate products they enjoy some kind of stability in terms of the interest rate and in terms of um the monthly payment amount your mo your monthly mortgage payment remains the same so there's some kind of stability in there so this kind of product is not vulnerable to market volatility remember last week when we were talking about the standard variable products and the tracker products those products are subject to you know market volatility in terms of if the interest rates the base rate especially goes up it affects those rates if it goes down it affects those rates so that, that level of stability is not there but with fixed rates uh, products that level of stability is there it means that market volatility does not affect it if the interest rate whether it is going up and down it remains fixed for that you know, period of time so it enjoys that kind of you know stability now this product is really um, suitable for people who want to be very certain of what their monthly mortgage payments are going to be like for a given period of time if they want to if they want some level of certainty if you're the type that likes certainty to know what exactly your mortgage payment is going to be within a given period of time then fixed rate product is suitable for you because you if certainty is really a priority for you again it helps households with budgeting some people just like to know what their budgets are for mortgages and for other household expenditures so if that is also your priority you might find that fixed rate products are suitable for you because it gives you that certainty and it helps you with household budgeting to exactly know how much you're spending on the, on your mortgage every month unlike the standard variable rate products for example where you might be paying a certain amount this month and next month if the um, monetary policy committee uh, at the bank of england decides to push rates up it could jack your uh, mortgage rate your mortgage mortgage payments up and then you pay a different amount and if they bring the interest rate down again you know the interest rate your mortgage payment drops as well so that's kind of volatility you're exposed to it plus the average the standard variable products are usually the interest rates are usually you know higher than the fixed um, rate products in most cases so if you are prioritizing certainty and you know um, stability in, in terms of household budgeting the uh, fixed rate product might be very suitable for it's a very very popular uh, mortgage product among lenders and among borrowers so with fixed rate products it's uh, borrowers can make overpayments yeah in some of the products the lenders will allow you to make overpayments it simply means that you can pay more than um, you are meant to pay in a particular given period but that given period has also a limit to how much you can pay some lenders set the limits of overpayments to 10 percent some more than 10 percent but typically it's 10 percent but i've seen lenders who um, allow you to overpay by you know as much as 20 percent some lenders also do not even allow overpayments at all if you overpay the you know the early repayment charges would apply because they wouldn't want you to um you know it would affect their margin if you either make um partial settlements or full settlement of the mortgage within that given period so they would always uh, charge you what we call early repayment charges Eligible charges might apply on those products if you make overpayments above the given limits that um, your mortgage product allows you. So it's always good to check with your lender to see what the limits are and what um, eligible payment charges apply if you overpay more by more than the limit that you are allowed to um, overpay. So. Um, the typical agreed limit is usually 10%, like I said, uh, but some lenders will allow you to pay to overpay by more than 10%, 10% of the outstanding 
mortgage balance. Basically, that's the typical limit they set in. And then um, it's important uh, for you to be clear, basically, to your broker on what your priorities are, whether you intend to repay this loan early or not. Because it, it, it enables your broker or your advisor to factor that in while advising you on the suitable product. You know, there are some borrowers who, who would say, I would like to pay this mortgage off as early as possible. Is there any product that would enable me to do that? So if your advisor or if your broker is helping you to arrange a mortgage and they know that this is a preference for you, they can arrange a fixed rate mortgage that would enable you to, you know, um, make more overpayments. You know, the interest rate might be a little bit higher, but then it enables you to do that. So it's always good to be clear on what your preferences are when you are speaking to your advisor or to your broker, so that when they are when they are recommending products for you, those mortgage products will serve the very purpose that you want them to serve. Okay, so um, now interest rates for uh, fixed products are somehow linked to how um, to how lenders raise their money. Now let me make the, let me just explain this a little bit. You see. Lenders raise funds in the wholesale market environment. And in that wholesale market environment, they borrow funds from people on wholesale. And when they borrow funds from people on wholesale, those funds come at a cost. Say, for example, if the lenders go to the wholesale market and they were able to secure funds, and they were able to secure funds for, say, at 1.5%, at and let's say they were able to secure 100 million pounds, say in bonds, at 1.5% every year for the next five years. So that 100 million pounds, they bring it to the marketplace, it becomes a pot of money available for them to lend to fixed rate borrowers. So if they, ra if they raise those money in the wholesale market, say in the bond market, and they raise 100 million pounds, they will start lending out of that pot for that period of time, which is five years. You know, Whenever they exhaust that pot of fund, they can withdraw that product from the market. So they might bring that product to the market at say 2.2%, you know, five year fixed mortgages. And then any application that comes to them will be, will be um, processed at 2.2%. And they will keep dishing out and dishing out those ones until they run out of this one. If that pot of money finishes, they can withdraw that product from the market and then replace it with, you know, their standard uh, fixed rate products, which may be higher than what they offer at the time, depending on what um, the market situation is at that time. So that's how uh, some of these fixed rates, uh, interest rates are determined, depending on what the cost of funds were for the lender when they went to the marketplace. So interest rates for fixed products, that's, you know, this is how somehow it's affected. And you remember that the lenders can also raise, you know, funds from the Bank of England. They can, you know, borrow money from each other. There are various ways they can raise these funds, even from their internal, um, internal products, their savings products and other products that allow them to get funds and hold them for some time so that they are sure that what they are lending to you is also based on how long they are allowed to keep that money. So, but I just give an instance with, you know, the wholesale market and how they raise money from there and how it affects or influence the interest rates that is charged to the clients when they borrow this money. So, um, this, so when rent lenders raise this money on the wholesale market, you know, the markup on that is what is regarded as the lender's margin. So if they borrow it at 1.5% and they offer it at 2.5%, there's a markup of 1% on there. And that's how the lenders make their money within that given period and within that available resources that they have and until they exhaust that pot of money. Okay, so um, there are some things that as a fixed rate um, interest clients you should be aware of. First of all, it's around interest rates, you know. So when lenders, um, when lenders produce interest rates for standard variable rate products and for standard variable rate product customers, for example, now in the current market, uh, in the current market environment, 
the base rate from Bank of England has been reduced to 0.1%. Now, a lot of the standard variable rate products, like I earlier mentioned in the market updates, has reduced from 4.90 to 4.60. That's the average uh, standard variable rate product. There are standard variable rate products that, have, that are a lot lower than that, but that's basically on the average. So if, for example, the rates uh, was 4.9%, and then the lender reduced it to 4.68% for standard variable rate customers. That's a drop of 0.22%. Yeah. Now, as a fixed rate product client, you do not expect to benefit from that. They are not going to drop their fixed rates at the same uh, by the same margin or by the same rate because it's fixed for that for that period. So you're not going to enjoy that uh, you know rate reduction because it is fixed for that period. So your fixed rates product, you know, does not allow you to benefit from that if there's a reduction in the interest rates for standard variable rate customers. Now, the, in the same way, if there is an increase for standard variable rate products, your fixed products will benefit because there will not be, there will be no increase on your interest rates, right? Because you are shielded from market volatility, so when the benefit comes for the standard variable rate um, customers, it doesn't apply to you. And when it is disadvantageous to them, it becomes a benefit to you as well. So you cannot, you know, have it both ways. You cannot eat your cake and have it. Now also on the interest rates, another thing you have to be aware of is that interest rates might rise while you are within your fixed um, rate period. Say if you took a two-year fixed um, rate mortgage and within within that two years interest rates increases, what it what it potentially means is that by the time that two years is finished, you might end up paying more than what you're currently paying. Because once that fixed period is exhausted, you know, that's it. You are now exposed to the volatility of interest rates and the market again. So you might end up paying more than what you are currently paying in your fixed uh, rates period. But hey, there is an antidote to that. The solution to that is, and what we do for our client is, maybe three months to the end of your fixed rates product, we'll give you a ring and we'll say, hey, can we have a look at um, your mortgage product and see, let's take a look at Let's look around the market and see if we can find you a better deal and start preparing you to get uh, to get that, you know, prior to the end of that two-year fixed period. So we we'll take a look at the market and if we find a product that is better or that suits your circumstance or your current circumstance at that time, we can we can remortgage your product your um, we can remortgage your uh, product at that time and put you on a better rate and put you on a better product right so that means you're not exposed to that volatility it means you're not exposed to the risk of having to pay more than what you're currently paying so if there's a better product in the market we'll transfer you to that better product it could be a direct product transfer it could be a remortgage with capital raising if you've got some equity left in your property and all that so there are various options for you but say that's something you've got to be aware of if you do not remortgage before that two-year fixed product finishes, you are risking being automatically um, you are risking being automatically transferred onto the standard variable rate product, most likely of that lender, and then you might be paying more than what you're currently paying. The other thing you've got to um, uh, be aware as well is around the fees um, on fixed rate products. Now. There might be arrangement fees, there might be reservation fees that are applicable for these fixed rate products, and you've got to be aware of that. So those fees might be payable upon application when you're making your full mortgage application for fixed rate mortgages. And um, these fees could be a percentage of the loan amount, or it could be a fixed fee. Say if, for example, you are taking a hundred thousand pounds mortgage, and the lender is saying that you know the fee is two percent. So it means that the lender's fee or the product fee for that is £2,000. So when you see lender's fees or when you see arrangement fees, you know, it might apply to uh, some 
uh, fixed rate products. There are some that you know the lender the lenders don't charge a fee. The lender might decide not to charge a product fee on that, but somehow they might they might decide to um, you know uh, compensate themselves in the other way by actually giving you a higher rate, or they might reduce the product fee on a particular fixed rate product, but the interest rate is going to be higher. You know there are several incentives these days, like you know no valuation fees, no solicitor fees, um, no early repayment charges, and all that. These are perks that lenders can add to these fixed products, but on the other hand, they might compensate themselves by also increasing the interest rate. So you have to be aware of these things and decide which of them matters more to you. Um, like one of the mortgages I one of the mortgages I, I arranged for one of my clients recently, um, I, I had to choose a product for him that, that wasn't the cheapest from the lender's um, product list. It was second to the cheapest because it meant that he wouldn't pay solicitor fees and he wouldn't pay valuation fees. The reason was that when I added the cost of the valuation fees and the solicitor fees, and then I added the savings he would have made if I chose that cheapest product for him, you know, he he will be better off with the product with a slightly higher interest rate because the cost of evaluation and the solicitor fees outweighed the savings that he would have made if I chose the cheapest product for him. That product was basically the second cheapest, the second to the cheapest product, but I recommended it to him because it came with those perks of no valuation and no solicitor fees. And I looked at it, so I explained to him why I recommended it to him, and you know, he was happy with that. So in some instances, a higher interest, slightly higher interest rates with some perks might make more sense than you know the cheapest interest rates. It all depends on the analysis by the broker or by the advisor and what your preferences are as well. And the other thing you've got to um, note as well around fees that these fees are meant to boost the profit margins of the lenders you know on fixed rate products that's basically why they charge these fees and those fees are usually non refundable if you cancel the application okay so if you pay if you pay those um, arrangement fees or those broker fees or application fees a lot of them are non refundable if you decide not to go ahead with the um, application so you have to be aware of that as well now on early repayment charges yeah, that's another thing you need to be aware of if you're uh, going for a fixed rate product. You know, early repayment charges will almost certainly be imposed if the loan is partially or fully redeemed, you know, before um, the end of the fixed term. So if you have a, a five year fixed mortgage and you decide to pay it off either partially or redeem it um, in full before the end of that five year term, there is almost it's almost certain that there will be an early repayment charge imposed on that. Now, early repayment charges are meant to deter clients or borrowers from basically dumping the current lender's product and jumping onto a cheaper or better product with another lender. Right? While because you saw a better product and then you are dumping this lender while you are still within the fixed rate period. Remember those fixed products. The lender has cut their margins, you know, a lot by offering you that product. So the, the the profitability of that product is on the basis of you fully abiding by that, and that's why it is fixed, right? You know, they've taken a, um, a cut on the margins to fix it to make sure that that stream of income is guaranteed for that period, and they would have planned their their financial projection and their cash flow and everything around that um, that fee, around that income, around that mortgage repayment. And then all of a sudden you break that and you want to jump out of that and jump onto another lender's product. Which, so they will impose that early repayment charge on you. And sometimes those early repayment charges could be a percentage of um, the outstanding balance on your on your mortgage or they could charge you a couple of months interest you know for if you want to get out of this and you want to pull out of this product this is how much you have to pay in penalty 
So it's basically penalizing you for breaking the contract and for breaking the agreement. You know, for example, you could, if you see some five year fixed mortgage products, they say if you repay this mortgage after year one, you're going to pay us 4% of the outstanding mortgage balance. If you repay it in year two or you want to partially repay it in year two, you're gonna pay us two. so the percentage could be you know reduced as the year goes by. So if you if the penalty is four percent after year one, it could be three percent after year two, two percent after year three, and you know so on and so forth until the, the final year of the contract, depending on at which stage of that fixed product you decided to pay off the mortgage. So if you are trying to get onto another mortgage product by another lender to pay off your existing lender, one of the key questions the your new lender will ask you is, are there early repayment charges applicable to your current mortgage product? If there, if there, if there is, how much is it? You know, every lender will ask you that question. They want to know what the terms are. If you break off um, from that agreement, are you going to be penalized? You know, even on a standard variable. So, whatever mortgage product you have, before you switch on to another mortgage product, it's important for you to look at your terms and conditions, look at your mortgage statements. It will state clearly there what the early repayment charges are before you get onto another mortgage product. You have to be clear on that and be, be certain that you are happy to pay that fee. That fee could now be built into your new mortgage product so that they will, you will now borrow that you add that as part of your borrowing to pay off the existing lender as part of how much you are owing the existing lender. That's very, very important for you to pay attention to. So it's either calculated as a percentage of the outstanding amount or it's calculated as um, you know, a couple of months interest payable on top of what you are already owing. Now, the other thing you've got to be aware of when taking them um, as a um, fixed rate product is, you know, associated products. There are some associated products that the lender would um, ask you to take out, like buildings and contents insurance or mortgage repayment protection. You know, the lender would like you to make sure that the buildings and the contents or just the buildings, barest minimum requirement is buildings insurance and then your mortgages. The lender would like to have that peace of mind that you have taken out a life insurance that is enough to at least pay off your mortgage in the event of death. And then it's also wise to add critical illness to it as well. Okay, so those are some of the associated products that the lender will have, would require you in some instances to take out before they complete on those mortgages. Now, we have explained why lenders impose early repayment charges is basically to deter borrowers from um, jumping from one product to the other which is going to affect the profit margin of the existing lender and then it will now force the lender in some cases to lend that same money that they would have lent to you to another borrower and possibly at a lower interest rate which means they are losing money so that early repayment charge compensates for whatever loss they will incur assuming they don't find a borrower that will borrow at the same rate that they have offered you that product. Okay, so I hope you know today's session has been very useful to you, and I hope you have had a clearer understanding of what you know fixed rates mortgage products are and how they operate and the benefits of them and how it's you know it applies to you. So it gives you that opportunity of making an informed decision. If you want to choose a fixed rate product, you now understand what you're getting. If you're already on fixed rate product, you understand better how it works. Please, if there is any question, do not um, hesitate in asking us any question. You can get in touch with me through any of my social media handles on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, or even um, on YouTube, ask me those questions. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel um, so that you always be the first to know when we, when we drop any um, educational products or um, any educational content on our YouTube uh, pages or channel. So basically, um, when you subscribe, you can also have access to previous episodes and sessions that we have uploaded on YouTube. We continuously upload, you know, materials on YouTube which are really educational, especially bordering around financial education and business education and just making sure that we 
continuously educate our clients around financial matters and uh, we have dedicated Wednesdays to just mortgages and protection and every Monday we do our Modesty's Monday Motivation which is a general personal financial education that we offer our clients. So thank you very much for being part of this one and thank you very much for listening and for watching. Please do not forget to share, to comment, to give us feedbacks and subscribe to our YouTube channels for more of similar useful contents. And we'd like to hear from you on what you think and how you feel about our programs. If they are really making a difference, we want to know. If they are not, please let us know. We want to know either way. But all in all, take care, goodbye, God bless, and stay safe. Bye.